In today's Gospel reading, we hear of a story, and that story is of a master who is going to a faraway land. And he had three servants, and he called them to himself, and he gave them a duty, and that duty was to take something that was very precious and to take it and increase it, to take care of it. The word in Greek is talondon. It's a measure, a measure of something very precious. It can be of metals. It can be equivalent to a sum of money. So he had three servants, and he gave them each a measure, a couple of measures, and asked them to take care of it. And then he went off to a far off land. And when he returned, the, he called the servants to him and asked them what they had done with the very valuable things he had given them. And two of them had doubled, doubled what he had given them. They had gone and traded and doubled it. And he was very pleased. And he called them good and righteous and asked them to share his joy. And the last servant was uh, doing something different. He took what had been given him and made a hole in the earth, put it in, covered it up. When his master returned, he dug out the hole, took what had been given him, and went to the master and said, that I know you are tough and severe, that you take what you don't sow, and here you can have your uh, possession back, it's all intact. And with that, he was punished. He was called unfaithful, he was called lazy, and he was put out of the, of the, of the house. He was put out of the house of his master into the darkness, and whatever was given him was taken away. And the Holy Fathers of our church have something to say about this story because it is a parable. It is a religious story spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ. It is spoken after he has said something about the kingdom of heaven coming when we least expect it. That is the context. And he is speaking to his disciples and apostles when he says these things. But he is also speaking to all the baptized of the church, all the baptized and chrismated. And the talendon, the measure, the precious things are seen by the fathers as having a great meaning in that they speak to the precious gifts that have been given to us by God, the things that we are capable of doing and the things that we are called to do, to be what we are supposed to be. And the goodness of those servants that went out and increased their talents, increased the preciousness that what had given, been given them, the fathers of the church interpret the word good to mean that they have showed love, that they have showed love to their neighbor in their lives. And in this way, the doubling was that they became what they were called to be in the image and likeness of God, to show love to others. And they then showed that love and had such an effect that it doubled for themselves and for the others. 
And they explained this. They explained that one servant was given more than another, and they say, well, that doesn't mean that one was more per perfect than another, because all of us are given different things. All of us are, some of us are given more talents, more precious gifts than others. But we're all called to use them, to use them throughout the Christian life. And there is a sharp contrast, the fathers draw between the servants that have shown love throughout their lives and acted as God, and thus are called righteous. And the servant that then comes to God and says, you're hard, you're severe. And they say, what is that a sign of? It is a sign of disobedience. I don't want to do what I'm called to do. I don't want to use my talents for what you're talking about. And they say, the Father, that it is very symbolic that the talent, the precious metal, money, which symbolizes the gifts, the gifts that we have been given, is placed in earth and covered up. They say that this represents the fact that this person, this unfaithful servant, has become enmeshed, enmeshed in things that have taken him away from his eyes to be set on heaven, that he has been so enmeshed in what is considered distracting, worldly, earthly, that he fails to understand that he stands before God. He stands before God throughout his entire life, that the master can come at unexpected times, but nevertheless, the master is with us. For the master is God. That's what the fathers say. And by doing what he did, by asserting that you reap what you do not sow, he is wrong. For God has sown within all of us. We are called not to compare ourselves with others, not to compare our talents with others, we are not to envy, but we are also not to say, well, this person has all of these abilities, I don't, what is the use? Or they will be more perfect than me, they'll be more holy than me. But the fathers say something that we have to fundamentally understand, that we are all given talents, that we are all given gifts. Some of us have different gifts, some of us have more gifts, some of us are more intelligent than others. It makes no difference. It makes no difference because we are all called to act as God. We are all called to grow in his likeness. We are all called to show his love throughout our lives and to act as he does with others so that we can live righteous lives. I pray that all of us, all of us, will stand before God throughout our lives so that when that second coming comes, we have, will have lives of self-examination, that we will have lives that are healthy ones, that realize our true human nature, that we have lives in which we have manifested the love of God throughout them. Please pray for me, an unworthy priest. Blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever. Who rose?